So I finished all eight episodes of Fallout, and I'm still convinced it's better than Last of Us. Oh, that's right, friends. We're going to review Fallout, and we're going to take a look at it. I'm not going to do a super deep dive into it, because I'm sure there's still some people trying to work their way through it. It's eight episodes. They dropped it all at once, which I think is probably the biggest mistake that Amazon made. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. I think they should have stuck with their weekly Discord and let people break it down. I mean, if people were breaking down each episode of True Detective, why couldn't they do fallout i just think it's a big mistake i i don't like it and i feel like you get more conversation about it and it lasts a little bit longer maybe you even pick up some fans along the way because people go i can't believe this craziness just happened in this episode or you know what do they call that water cooler talk or what have you anyway i'm the man you may know as z from our reviews will kill you and we're here to break it all down let's take a look hopefully i have it on the right screens um, what's interesting is you may not have known this, but this show was made by, well, at least the showrunners are the same showrunners that you may know from such things as Westworld. That's right. They're the Westworld people. And for those of you who remember, you know, prestige television with HBO or Max or whatever you want to call it. These guys had the beginnings of one of those prestige television shows, Westworld, which I still think one of the one of the best first seasons, it, first yeah first seasons ever made, like would have been right up there with all the other ones that people talk about, Game of Thrones and everything else. And then they ran it into the ground. So the showrunners are Lisa Joy and um, Jonathan Nolan. No, not Christopher Nolan, the Academy Award winning director, his brother. That's right. Interesting, right? And I think they probably pegged these guys because they had experience with Westerns. From what I understand, this show's been in kind of a development hell for a long time until they gave it to the Westworld folks. And I feel like they had some help rewriting the script a little bit because uh, anybody who wrote Miss Marvel ain't going to be able to do that good of a job. And this was pretty good. And I think what it comes down to is actually decent writing. So the one thing that I'll say about the show is I think it's fascinating that it had three character arcs where if you look at Last of Us, there are no character arcs. There's Ellie and Joel, and uh, Joel learns that he's a bitch, and then Ellie learns that Joel is a bitch, and that's about as much as you get out of that show. Like what she was, she was independent and fierce to begin with, and she remains independent and fierce from the first time we meet her till the last time we see her in Last of Us. And Joel's kind of a jerk, ends up more of maybe his character arc is that he becomes more of a puss. I don't know. Very bizarre. But then you take a look at Fallout, <clears throat> and you have really three questions of of philosophy almost, and. If you guys want me to get further into it, but what you really have is, um, you know, are you made by the world or does the world make you or can the world break you? You have three main plot lines that go through the show. One is Ella per uh, Purnell's character, who's a vault dweller. Uh, then there's Aaron Moten, who is a uh, soldier for the Brotherhood of Steel. And then there's Walton Goggins, who is... Um, <clears throat> I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but he, he plays the ghoul. I think everybody knows that at this point. And what you have is someone who, you know, the vault dweller was, was raised with a certain type of values, and then she's shown on the outside world that if she doesn't change that moral set that she has, that she's been fundamentally um, forged with, that she won't survive. But at the same time, sh she has value because she can be trusted. She's one of the few people that can be trusted in the upper world because they know exactly how where she comes from and exactly where she stands and that she may not just be looking f out for herself. And then the, the opposite end of the spectrum, you have the ghoul who is strictly looking at things for himself and only cares about what he his interests are 
and he finds her interesting because he knows her naivete. And then you have uh, Aaron Moten, who's this the soldier Maximus, who it has has very ambiguous moral code. The Brotherhood is not there is no straightforward code with them. Only that the Brotherhood survives. But the moral code doesn't seem to be there. So I thought that was interesting. Now, they don't explore it as much as I would have liked. and I. Th but I do think there are some several important conversations that could be had about it. And I think that contributes to the solid writing. And it adds another layer of subtext to it. Because everything, like every situation, boils down to uncovering moral code. And, and what is moral and what isn't. And all of her decisions that she makes are founded on this moral code. And I think that made it a much stronger show than what you would have normally got. Uh, the acting is fantastic. Ella Purnell's great. Don't know her for much of anything, and she was wonderful. I thought Aaron Moten grew, grew on me. Walton Goggins is a legend. Guy's amazing. Did a wonderful job. Lots of great cameos. Quite a few SNL cameos from... Um, oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm going to forget who they were. Let's see if I can see any of them in here real quick. Uh, let's see who is from SNL. I know. Well, I guess my favorite one, because the SNL ones, I know Morty's dad is in it. Uh, is it Nick Chris? Uh, does my favorite one is is Matt Barry? Matt Barry plays the. Uh, well, I won't tell you who Matt Barry plays, but you may know Matt Barry from. Uh, oh my gosh, why am I spacing on this show? He, he's a he's a well known voice actor, but he's from Garth Marenghi. Um. It's the old cult classic show. It's probably out of everybody's league. It's British. It's pretty hilarious. Darth Marenghi. If you know what it is, you'll know. But he, he's great. He's fantastic. And most of the reviews are all positive. I'll get to one in particular that was a bad review. Uh, but here's our old friend, Eric Kane. Maybe one day I'll actually speak to this guy and interview him. He does a lot of freelance writing, and we... Uh, sort of agreed on true detective and then he got i don't know he got into a lot of fights with people over it he says fallout is terrific but makes one huge mistake <coughs> eric kane ag i agree with him he says that he didn't like that they dumped it all at once he likes to break down episodes and um you know he makes another really solid point here he says that it's very accessible for people whether or not you knew, you knew you play the games, it doesn't matter. You, you'll if you like the games, you're going to see a lot of fun stuff, but it won't matter. There's just things that are built in the universe. The attention to detail on the sets are it's absolutely stellar. Like I just loved every little bit of it. I'm not the biggest like Fallout fan. I played Fallout 76 for about a year ish, maybe, uh, and I, I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot about the world and I thought that this fit right in there. Um, he compares it to Arcane, which is great. I whether or not you played League of Legends, which I agree with. Uh, even the it seems to appease everybody, which is so weird. Everybody likes this show. I don't understand. Fallout, an absolute blast of a show. This is coming from The Guardian. Shocker, right? Everybody agrees this is a good show. I think they were expecting it to be bad. And the reason why I compare it to Last of Us is because there's a lot of reasons. It's a video game adaptation. It's also a um, post-apocalyptic world, kind of a travel show, you know what I mean? Like they travel, have adventures, things like that. It's like a road, a road story. So there's a lot of similarities to be had in this. Um, but it's, it's interesting where... Um, you don't need, you know, any. I think that's what so many people liked about it is that anybody could get into it, and um, you know, everybody seems to be on the same page. They all seem to like it. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's violent. It's funny. It's got everything going for it, uh, and a lot, a lot of Easter eggs. A lot of Easter eggs. Um, let me read this. I saw one review though that was really bad that I thought was kind of funny but also got invalidated let's take a look at their reviews imdb has it uh oh so the showrunners they, they explained to the the writers of the show like what did they learn from jonathan nolan i'm sure they learned a lot right now it's got a 92 percent on rotten tomatoes which is just shy of uh hbo's the last of us doesn't matter 
still think it's 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 better. And again, they said it was a five year labor of love from the showrunners. And then they brought in executive producers, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, who knew how to do a Western. Clearly, until they turned it into garbage with seasons two through four of Westworld. Um, but let's take a look, see if I can find that review again. Because uh, th their average score is pretty high as well for Fallout. I think it's a 4.7 out of 5. So it seems like most people like it. and uh, Or they have a 9.1 out of 10 top rated season. Let's see, first season. Well, I can't find it, but basically the guy was ranting about how it's it's stupid and, and if you like Fallout, you're not going to like this. And then for some reason, and there is a big cameo from somebody, he says, um, from Michael Rappaport actually, he says, it was, uh, it, and when Woody Harrelson showed up in it, it was terrible. Uh, I was like, eh, I don't remember Woody Harrelson being in it. You clearly must be mistaking Woody Harrelson for Michael Rappaport, who are not even remotely the same actor at all on any level. So to have you guys mix that up is pretty funny. So let's see. Can we find any of the ones? I would love to see a terrible review for this. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. What did you think? Have you gotten through it? How much uh, How much have you got through? Did you? Wh what do you think? Are you into this world? Do you want to see a second season? Should they have dumped it so early? Should they have left it, you know, go on for longer? I think they should have. Let me know in the comments below. You can also catch the opposing idea video, which is Noob Noob's video, where he claims that Last of Us is better, considering he never played Fallout and didn't even finish the series, and has only played Fallout or only played Last of Us the game, and doesn't in fact. He doesn't like. He doesn't even remember what happened in the in the HBO one and why it was so annoying and ridiculous. So let me know in the comments down below who's right, noob noob or Z, and which one are you going with, Fallout or Last of Us? If you had to take one into the apocalypse, which one are you taking? In the meantime, catch our podcast. We live stream it here, YouTube, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also chill with Rumble. You guys get to see it next, and. Uh, Thank you for, for catching this. Like and subscribe. But I'm on to the next one.